uh, I'm definitely looking forward to this fight. This is it. this is my biggest fight up to date. This means so much to me, especially fighting at the Madison Square Garden. This is a dream, something that I've always dreamed of. So come September 13th, I'm, I'm really excited. I'm training hard and I'm feeling good. So at your camp, we spent some time with you at the snack facility back in San Francisco. Real sort of impressive state of the art setup over there. Has this been your most intense camp yet? Um, all my all my camps are intense. You know, this is just another intense camp. I've always pushed my body to the limit. I am getting stronger. I'm getting faster. Um, so of course, you know, uh, my performance September 13th will show. Uh, my sparrings have been, you know, crazy as usual. Training has been crazy as usual. So I'm ready. In all of your interviews to pass, you've never really been one to kind of, you know, talk about fights and being under pressure and everything like that. But in terms of the gravity of what this fight can lead to, for, to you, I mean, do you feel a bit more pressure going into this? Is it, does it feel any different in camp or leading into the fight or thoughts behind it? Yeah, going into this fight, it feels a little different because fighting at Madison Square Garden is big. That's, that's huge. You know, this is, like I said, this is something that I've always dreamed of. Just that and knowing that the winner will be fighting for a world title means so much. So uh, I'm excited. I'm a little nervous, uh, but I'm anxious and I'm ready. Let's talk about Abdulev just now. He's you know, ranked number, th number three in the WBC rankings just behind you. I mean, he's your second undefeated opponent and he's not really to be taken lightly, is he? No, Abdulev is not to be taken lightly at all. With so, much, it's so, with so much at stake, knowing that you know, the winner will be fighting for a world title, it, it means a lot. So I know that Abdulev is going to bring it his all. I know he's going to come to fight. I know he's going to lay everything on the line. So he can't be taken lightly at all. What, have you watched much of his fights, many of his fights? Have you kind of break him down, his style? I've, I've seen a little bit of Abdulev, not too much because I try not to watch my opponents too much because a guy can watch me all day long and you know a total different Devin Haney comes, uh, comes, on, comes out uh, the night of the fight. So I try not to watch too much of it. I have seen a little bit of him and I think that he's, that he's a tough, rugged opponent. I think that he's gonna go in there and he's gonna try to put the pressure on me and try to break me down mentally as well as physically. So I'm gonna be ready for whatever he, whatever he has, whatever he brings. And as you know, we saw him in LA a few, a few weeks ago and he kind of said that um, it's a shame that he can't dethrone you in Vegas in your, on your home patch. He's having to fight you in New York. And he says he wants to kind of silence the hype around you. How would you kind of respond to what he said? Um, well, no, you know, with him saying that he wants to silence the hype or he wants to dethrone me in Vegas, that's, that's you know, uh, that's expected. That's expected coming from him. Um, I know that he's, like I said, I know that he's going to go in there. He's going to give it his all. He can talk as much as he want. Him or his coach cannot fight for him. And, you know, uh, when we go in there to fight September 13th, all the talk will be done, and we'll see. Uh, we'll see who who really is is in there to win, and who is who will be talking when the bell when the bell rings. And just on the kind of on the conversation around hype, you're a fighter that's on pretty much everyone everyone's lips in the boxing world. How do you use it? How do you personally kind of deal with that kind of the media attention and the expectation around you? How do you kind of deal with that? And do you just kind of brush it aside and get on with the job? I knew that this day would come when everyone would be talking about me. Um, I remember when no one was talking about me, and I and I was wondering like, like you know, what what am I doing wrong? What do I need to do for you know the the whole boxing world to know who I am, to know who Devin Haney is? You know, so I I, I just worked hard, uh, I paid my dues, and now the time has finally come. So it's time to me, time for me to rise to the occasion and show the world that Devin Haney is the truth. And quite an apt time as well, because you know, you, as we all know, you made your Dazone and Matchroom debut a few months back in Maryland. That was an incredible knockout. I mean, that must be up there, one of your best performances, one you must be really pleased with. Yes, my my last performance was my best. Uh, I'm, I was very pleased with that one. So this time, you know, I got to go in there and I have to show out and I have to try to, you know, outdo my last performance. And let's talk about again where this fight potentially puts you. You know, as a mandatory for Lomachenko's WBC belt now. I mean. There's been a lot of talk about his plans at lightweight. What are your thoughts on the current situation, how things are unfolding at the moment? I really don't know how everything is going to play out after this fight, as far as you know, a, a world title shot or not. I don't know if I'm going to be able to fight Lomachenko or how is it going to play out. Um, but I am taking this fight like it is a world title within itself because, you know, with this, with the winner, with this is can you know maybe fight for a world title or be right there and wait it out. We don't know where this fight will take us. So I'm, I'm training for this and preparing for this like I'm fighting Lomachenko or any of the other world champions. So there's been a bit of conversation around, you know, whether or not you're ready for this fight against Lomachenko. And he said that there's not a possibility of you fighting him, even in 2020, if you win this fight. How do you respond to that and kind of, and comments that you might be a little bit more, sorry, a little bit inexperienced in that department? 
Um, it's just, you know, I laugh at it that, you know, Bob Arum is picking every opponent, everyone to fight Lomachenko but me. But it just shows me that I'm doing something right. And if I don't get to fight Lomachenko in, you know, my career, it's fine. I don't need Lomachenko. Lomachenko doesn't make or break me. It's okay. You know, my time has come. I'm only 20 years old. I have, you know, a long road ahead of me. And I'm okay if I don't get the chance to fight Lomachenko. Of course, I would love to. But if I don't, that's okay. Where do you feel like you are at the moment in your career in terms of fighting for a world title? Do you feel you're completely ready for that? I feel like I'm completely ready for a world title shot. Um, I'm at the breaking point in my career where it's, it's, everything is about to take off. After this fight, uh, it's either I'm going to be fighting for a world title or I'm not. But I will be up there you know, with those top guys. My name will be mentioned with every top guy you know, in my weight class, whatever weight class I go to, even if I move up, move up to 140. One, 135 is not the easiest for me to make, so I won't stay there too much longer. If I can't get a world title, I'll move up to 140. I'm, at, I'm a big 135 pounder, and you know, it takes a lot of sacrifice for me to make 135. So if I can't get a world title there, I'll move up. Let's just go back now. So I wanna talk about personally, your relationship with your father in camp. How, how crucial is his presence in your life as a, as, a, as a fighter to your development, not only as a fighter, but as the whole Devin Haney brand? My dad means so much to me and, and you know, the whole Devin Haney brand because, you know, without him, it, it wouldn't be no Devin Haney. It wouldn't be any of this. You know, my dad was a person that took me, take, took me to the gym the first time in my whole entire life. And, you know, pretty much my dad has played a role through my whole career. You know, my dad has had a say in everything that I've done. So without him, you know, any of this wouldn't have been done. So I couldn't thank him enough and I appreciate him training camp is going great uh, this is this is one of our best training camps you know we me being and and just me being on my 23rd you know professional fight we're getting more comfortable we're getting more you know uh, camp is going more smooth and you know September 13th we're ready and I guess regardless of whatever fight is at Madison Square Garden it must be a real privilege to, to, to fight there and it must be something you, you must be really proud of achieving yes it's definitely a huge privilege to fight at Madison Square Garden like I said, this means so much to me, you know, fighting there. Uh, this is a dream come true. I never thought that I would be fighting at Madison Square Garden at the age of 20. So uh, I'm preparing, you know, like no other, and I'm ready. And just finally, your thoughts on the fight. How do you see it going? I know fighters don't always like to give a prediction, but if there is one, uh, what, what is it? I think that this fight, I'm going to be able to show my full arsenal. Uh, I'm, I'm going to be able to show the world some things that they haven't seen from me. I'm going to show them that I'm versatile and that I can do it all. And that um, I, I am ready for those top guys. You know, I feel like Abdulab is the next step to take me to where I want to be. We look forward to seeing you on September 13th. Thank you very much. Thank you.